Welcome to our video on keeping crocodilians. This video is designed to help you keep crocodilians in an environment which is healthy for the reptile whilst being safe for you. Crocodilians are truly fascinating creatures and during this video we will aim to cover some of the various facts concerning these truly awesome animals. Crocodilians are not pets and should only be kept by professional herpetologists or keepers with enough experience and room to house them properly. All crocodilians are covered by the Dangerous Wild Animals Act. In this video we are solely dealing with the husbandry requirements of how to keep these reptiles. But it is our belief that the Dangerous Wild Animals Act is there for everyone's benefit and should be complied with. And these animals should only be kept with the correct license and insurance. Information on this act can be obtained from your local council. In this video, we will cover the following points. Crocodilian biology and body structure. Housing your crocodilian. Handling your crocodilian. And finally, we will look at three specific species. The American alligator, the spectacled caiman, and the Nile crocodile. Although many of the points can be used for most of the crocodilian species. Crocodilian biology is a very complicated subject and during this video we will only cover this subject on a surface level. There are many in-depth books which can be purchased to further the keeper's study. We will now have a look at the various features which make these reptiles totally unique. One of the first things which people notice about crocodiles and alligators is the difference in their jaws. It is an easy way to distinguish between them. In alligators, when the mouth is closed, the lower teeth occlude inside the upper ones. However, in crocodiles, when the mouth is closed, both upper and lower teeth are along the same line, and the teeth scissor together. The conclusion of this is both upper and lower teeth are visible when the mouth is closed. The head of a crocodilian has a number of features worth mentioning. The first point is the way the eyes are designed to go into the sockets and protect the eyes from injury. When an object goes near the eyes, the eyes are withdrawn into the skull. As you can see here, when the eyes are withdrawn, there is no way for them to be hurt. Crocodiles also withdraw the eyes when feeding again protecting them from any struggling prey. One of the other incredible features about a crocodile's jaw are the black dots which are located all over the jaw area. These are in actual fact intercommentary sense organs or ISOs. These receptors are there for a number of reasons. First of all, they are monitoring pressure changes and can easily pick up sensory information around the head. There is also a possibility that these receptors can even pick up changes in salinity of the water. An example of their use would be a fish swimming past the head of an alligator 
it will create small pressure changes from the micro movements of water. As the alligator vision is not great underwater, these receptors will then guide the alligator into catching the fish. The last thing we will look at in the mouth is the gula or palatal valve. If you observe a crocodile or alligator, you will see the mouth is not watertight. So what happens when a croc is swimming or eating in the water? As you can see here, at the back of the mouth is a valve. This stops water entering the trachea or esophagus. It has at least two functions. Firstly, the croc does not drown when swimming and also is able to grab aquatic prey items in the water without any problems. It can also seize terrestrial food and take it beneath the surface of the water where it will drown, but the croc is able to hold its breath whilst holding onto the prey. This adaptation is extremely useful and allows the croc or gator flexibility in its behaviour. It is a common misapprehension that crocodilians cannot hear and don't have ears. As you can see here, they clearly do. They have a flap of skin which protects the ear from attack. Their hearing is quite good and keepers can often train their crocs to come on a verbal command. Along the surface of both the alligator and crocodile, you will see protrusions called osteoderms. These are used in thermoregulation. They have an extremely good blood supply and can be used in much the way an elephant uses its ears to cool down. If the croc is too cool, then basking in the sun will raise the temperature of the osteoderms quickly due to the blood supply. When swimming, these osteoderms can be used very intelligently. The croc can swim with the osteoderms above the surface of the water. And as the water is cooling the temperature of the croc, then this area which is raised above the surface is counterbalancing the cooling effect. And the croc is able to spend much longer swimming without basking. An important part of keeping crocodilians is to realise that they are the only reptiles which are recognised to have a higher function within the brain. They have a much denser brain than other reptiles and can adjust their behaviour quite complexly to information discovered. So it is important for any keeper to realise this and give the animal the respect it deserves. Housing your crocodilian Housing your crocodilian is an important factor to your new acquisition remaining healthy. In this video we have based the housing footage on medium sized crocodilians. It is essential that a number of points are remembered in the building of your croc pen. One, firstly your croc will grow. So before purchasing you need to make sure you have enough room. Two. Secondly, due to the pond, there will be high levels of humidity. So if it is an indoors pen, then make sure construction is of materials which can handle this. 3. It is also important that you can clean easily, which is why some keepers use tiling on the walls and floors so hygiene can be kept to a maximum. OK, so let's have a look at your croc enclosure. If you are lucky enough to be able to keep your crocodiles outside, then as we see here, you can give your crocs or gators copious room. If it is inside, then we have gone into some of the factors to bear in mind. It is very important that your cage contains a land and water area. One of the first mistakes a keeper can make is not to heat the water. The land area and the water area must be heated. As with other reptiles, digestion of crocodilians is completely dependent on temperature. And crocodilians spend considerable time in the water, which is why it is important that the temperature is correct. 
which is vital though that they have a basking area to dry off. Obviously, specific temperatures differ depending on which species you are going to keep. Make sure you do adequate research on this. As a general rule, you should be looking at setting up a thermal gradient of 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The nighttime drop should be done in a different way to many reptiles. Keep the water temperature the same, but reduce the land temperature. How large your enclosure needs to be is obviously dependent on the size of the crocodilian you have purchased. But base the size roughly on four times the length of the croc or caiman. And it is the same for the water enclosure. This is very much a minimum and if you can give more room then please do so. The water area should be kept clean. It is important that a filtration system should be used on the water system. Many garden centres sell this type of equipment as it is often used in koi carp ponds. Remember that captive crocodilians are susceptible to bacterial infections due to unclean cages. Here we see the sort of cage a keeper might use for an indoor enclosure. Note the water area and basking area. The pond has a filter system which is plumbed to the outside. It is a good idea to make sure the caiman or crop has somewhere they can go to feel secure. Decorations can be placed in the cage but remember, crocodilians are very strong and so the decoration should reflect this, otherwise it will get destroyed. A good substrate is river sand. This is also available from garden centres. A crocodilian's feet are very soft, so it is not a good idea to use concrete in the enclosure as this can cause problems. Many keepers have different opinions on whether crocodilians need full spectrum lighting. But there is some evidence to support the hypothesis that it is beneficial, especially when compared to crocs who are kept without it. UVB is obviously important in the synthesis of vitamin D3, although much of it is absorbed from a varied diet. UVA importance is largely unknown, but the behaviour and general health of crocodilians is improved by using full spectrum lighting. It is also thought that this wavelength is responsible for skin hygiene. We would always recommend the use of this type of lighting. The new power suns which have been developed also make good basking spots as well as being full spectrum lights. When designing your enclosure you need to think about cleaning and not causing the crop too much stress. That's why a filtration system is good as it is constantly filtering the water. Many keepers have had their captives from babies and so have trained them to be used to the cleaning regime. This is a much better system as a reptile is far less stressed. There is no wrong or right way of cleaning as long as the cage is clean and the animal's needs are paramount. Once your cage has been set up, invite another crop keeper to come and look at your system. Often fresh eyes can spot any problems. Once you have checked the temperatures remain constant, you are then able to put your crocodilian into the enclosure. It is important you allow the new acquisition to settle in, as you do not want him hurting himself from being stressed out. After your croc has settled in, start to establish a routine with it. Remember that they have a higher function brain than other reptiles and will quickly adapt to it. In maintenance of the cage there are two philosophies. One is to remove the croc from its pen and the other is to clean around it. We would generally recommend the second one as it is far less stressful for the croc. Most crocs or gators can be trained to go into their secure area for cleaning. This allows you to clean the cage with ease. But it is important that you remember some species can be territorial and might object to somebody coming in. With large crocs we would always recommend the two man rule. One cleans whilst the other watches his back. Most of the mess is from food. This can be avoided by offering smaller prey items which the croc can easily swallow. The water should be kept clean and this is generally done using a filter system you have plumbed into your pool. 
Every two to three weeks, you will need to drain the pond and give it a good scrub. The general condition of your pond will directly affect the general health of your crocodilian. Handling your crocodile is the most dangerous part, and although you can get some calm crocodilians, it is generally the exception rather than the rule. If handled wrongly, the crocodile can be injured, and so can the keeper. Normally, when crocodilians are restrained in any way, you will see a completely different side to them. Many species will thrash about on death roll to escape. Whatever handling technique you choose to use, it is important it's done as fast and safely as possible to reduce stress levels in the crop. There are two basic ways of catching your croc or caiman. The first one is to use a noose or top jaw rope to secure the animal. Then you will be able to restrain him and shut the jaws. Here you are seeing the use of the top jaw rope. If the croc is in the pond, then you will need to remove the croc first using the rope before restraining him. If the croc or gator is of reasonable size, you will also need another two people for safety. Here, you can see the top jaw rope in use, and the croc has been moved to a different part of the enclosure where the top jaw rope is then secured. Make sure it is secured to something immovable, as they are very strong animals and capable of strength which will surprise most people. It is important at this point that the croc or gator's body language is carefully watched. Before a croc explodes into action, the legs change position and the body tenses. By keen observation, it can give the keeper advanced warning of what is about to happen. The keeper, in one movement, needs to go from a standing position at the rear of the croc with the end of his tail between his legs to kneeling astride the croc where he or she places his hand safely around the neck. It is important for keepers to allow their legs to take their own weight and not the croc's back. Make sure you are lifting yourself slightly so this does not happen. The backup keeper then helps by turning the legs so that the croc is immobilised. It often helps by placing a blindfold over the head of the captured crocodile as this helps reduce stress. Now the time has come to deal with the end that bites. It often helps by placing a blindfold over the head of the captured crocodile as this helps reduce stress. This can then be removed once the croc is secure. It is worth noting that when the blindfold is being placed on the croc, the croc will often bite the blindfold if it can, and this will have to be untangled before it can be removed. Crocodilian blood chemistry is rather complicated, and we will look at a chemical reaction which stress often induces as a direct effect of handling. It is important a basic understanding of this is had to ensure healthy crocs. Handling should always be kept to an absolute minimum, and only done for a reason. Crocodilians are not animals which will sit on your lap and be petted, neither do they want to live on your boat. They are happiest when left alone, but of course there are times such as inspections and complete cleanouts when this is necessary. When stressed, one of the reactions which can take place is a shift in the pH level of the blood. It often drops a great deal, and in other forms of life, this would cause injury or death. This process is known as acidosis, and anyone who has seen the crocodile hunter will have certainly heard Steve mention it on numerous occasions. Crocodiles are built for short bursts of energy, and not long ones. When a croc is stressed and thrashing about, then lactic acid builds up. Under normal conditions, the body deals with this and everything is okay. But when restrained and the croc is being held, it is unable to do this. 
This then leads to the pH level in the blood dropping to dangerous levels. Which is a credit to these creatures that they can take this level of drop at all. But the important factor is the length of time this occurs over, which is why handling must be done as quickly and safe as possible. When the mouth has been secured using simple tape, which can easily be removed afterwards, a close inspection of the animal by the staff or the vet can then take place. The other way of handling crocs is as you see it here. Carlos is taking the croc by the tail and using the teepees, which is placed in the neckline, you are able to block the croc from turning and biting. The croc is then manoeuvred round to a position so you can place a blindfold over the eyes. This can be an exercise where patience is a virtue, as some crocs I have observed throw the blindfold off numerous times. Once the blindfold is on, the croc will usually settle right down. This gives the keeper an opportunity to stand correctly and commit to the movement we talked about earlier. Once astride the crocodile or gator, with the hands placed around the neck, you are now ready to move your hands to ensure the mouth is kept closed. You will notice in both examples, Carlos pulls the head upwards once he has a grip of the jaw. This is to enable greater control. It does not hurt the croc but allows the keeper to feel more secure. With your hands around the neck, you are ready to begin the journey in closing the mouth. With both hands stable, your right hand should come forward over the eyes. This calms the croc and makes moving your other hand easier. This hand should also be gently pressing down on the head, making sure the mouth is shut. The left hand should come forward along the head and grasp the jaws, holding them shut. Your fingers should be underneath grasping hold of the lower jawbone with your thumb on top applying pressure. This gives you a firm grip. It is very important that you do not bring your hand in from the side, as the croc or gator will pick up on it and turn sideways and bite you. As we have said earlier, crocs and gators are very sensitive to movement from the sides. With this grip in place, you can now move your right hand and grasp the jaw on the opposite side, giving you a two-handed hold. You may now gently pull the head towards you to enable greater control. In this section we have given you the basics in handling, but handling crocs is not an A plus B scenario and it is incredibly important that you do this with an experienced croc handler first. Do not take this video and think you can do it. You need to be mentored by someone who can show you the ropes and has much more experience in crocodiles. In this final section, we have given you the basics of three specific crocodilians. However, if you are contemplating keeping these species, then it is an absolute must that further research is done. The Mississippi alligator, or alligator mississippiensis, is certainly a crocodilian which has a better reputation than most of the others, which is one of the reasons it is kept by many Americans. However, there are a number of issues which need to be thought about before a specimen is purchased. Distribution. This gator is found mainly in the southeastern United States, which includes Alabama, North and South Carolina, Florida, Georgia and of course Mississippi.
Generally, these creatures are found in freshwater swamps, as well as rivers and small bodies of water. The construction of burrows is also well known with this species, and is used when temperatures drop due to the time of year. They are also capable of travelling distances to find water during the drier seasons. Males can reach 12 to 14 feet, which is important when considering this in captivity. A 14 foot alligator would require a sizeable enclosure and pool. They are very heavy bodied crocodilian and their snouts are particularly broad and completely different to their cousins the crocodiles. Alligators are by far the most vocal. During the mating season, these reptiles are well known to call to each other. In doing this, large males are even capable of making the water vibrate from the low frequencies employed to do it. It is very interesting to watch, and I have even observed them calling to a tractor which they perceive to be a dominant male. The spectacle caiman, or caiman crocodilus, is one of the most commonly kept crocodilians. Exported frequently and occasionally bred in captivity, these reptiles need the correct husbandry and care for a stress-free existence. Their distribution is based around South America and includes Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Guyana, Honduras, Mexico and some of the southern states in the USA. Their habitat is quite varied due to their adaptable natures. They are found in lowland areas where floodplains exist. Interestingly, they generally prefer still water and as with the alligator, if environmental factors have become difficult, they are known to burrow to protect themselves. Their diet starts with aquatic insects and crustaceans. And as they grow bigger, this then changes to larger prey items, such as fish, amphibians and water birds. Full adults are capable of taking larger mammalian prey, which come to drink near the water. The temperament of the spectacle caiman is one for much debate. Generally, they are easily stressed and can bite quickly when harassed. This is certainly not one of the calmer crocodilians, and the main reason it is kept is the small size it achieves when compared to some of the others. One of the things to watch out for in the handling of this species is the way it bends its tail and head round trying to defend itself. When this happens it is all too easy for the caiman to bite the end of its own tail off. If this is to be avoided then careful handling must be observed. This species is not one which we would recommend as they have a nervous disposition and can remain highly stressed when kept. Whilst understanding you are never going to have a totally calm crocodilian, there are far better choices to keep. If you do decide to keep the spectacle caiman, then attention to its enclosure is important. Security for the caiman is very important, so make sure you place areas in the pool where they can hide. 
as Cayman are offered frequently for sale and fairly cheaply, it is important that potential keepers take into account all the considerations before purchasing one of these beautiful creatures. The Nile Crocodile, or Crocodilus niloticus, is certainly one of the daddies when it comes to the crocodilians. Stories of these creatures taking wildebeest in the heart of the Maasai Mara is well known to most people. Their range is quite large and covers numerous African countries which include Angola, Tanzania, Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria and Mozambique. They also have habitat preferences which vary from wide rivers to freshwater lakes and swamps. This species is among the larger species of crocodilians and males can reach between 15 and 18 feet. There is some evidence of various localities where the Nile crocodiles reach much smaller sizes. This could be due to the lack of large game crossing their path. Their diet changes due to the size variation from juvenile to adults. Juveniles would normally start on invertebrates and insects. As they get bigger, they would normally move on to fish, mammals such as rats and small rodents which reside next to the water. As adults they are capable of killing antelopes, buffalo and even young hippos. In the wild they can spend time scavenging meat and animals which have died near or in the rivers. There have even been reports of prey animals wedged under submerged rocks and crevices so that the crocs can eat later when ready. The temperament of this species of crocodile can be truly awesome in its ferocity and is certainly not for beginners. Certainly this is not a species which is going to take kindly to being handled. Keepers have even reported being stalked and chased across enclosures. Due to the size of this species, adult handling must be done with extra people so accidents do not occur. In our opinion, the Nile crocodile should not be kept unless a keeper has exceptional facilities which normally only a professional institution would have. This is mainly due to the sheer size that one of these crocodiles can reach. Not only do they require room for the individual animal, but the keeper needs room to work around them as well. Certainly this species reputation is probably well deserved. Crocodilians are fascinating creatures, in which we have only looked at the tip of the iceberg. They have depths in behaviour which many reptiles do not have. But it is important that any potential keeper does the research and prepares the housing prior to any purchase. A baby crocodilian in a pet shop looks cute, but it is going to grow into an adult crocodilian where its needs are somewhat more specialised. Many of the rescued crocs or caiman started life in a pet shop and bought by an owner who had not done the correct research into their requirements. We would always encourage the potential owner to think about this. You must also remember that all crocodilians come under the DWAA in the UK and a license must be attained before any purchase is completed. It is our hope that this video has introduced to you the world of keeping crocodilians and what is entailed in keeping them in a correct manner. If after watching this video you have decided that maintaining them is not for you then equally we have achieved one of our goals. Crocodilians are splendid creatures with hidden depths and as humans we are just scratching the surface on knowledge of their natural history and what makes them tick. In the making of this video we need to especially thank Crazy World in the Algarve in Portugal for allowing us to film their captives and housing. Also to the staff and especially Tim for their friendship and hospitality while staying over there. There are a number of other people in the making of this video we would like to thank. To Carlos and Paolo two of the best crop keepers I have ever met. Thanks for your time, teaching and willingness to share. Damien Dodd for the help in filming some of the shots needed and acting as bait when required. Stuart Doddsworth for the tips and help in researching this video. And to the staff of Aztec Reptiles who have repeatedly been asked to watch this video and give comments. 